everybody. This is Francis Castaneda Dice, president of the Houston Easton Chamber of Commerce, and it's an honor to welcome you to our Feel Good Friday. Um, we're so excited. It's the last day of July, and we have some wonderful people for you to meet. Uh, sometimes when you pass by stores, you wonder who is behind those great walls. Well, today you're going to meet uh, the owners of OP Therapy and Wellness, and also coming soon to the East End is Street to Kitchen. So thank you, uh, Painters and the Perezes, for, for joining us today. Thank you, thank for, you having for having us. us. Thank you. Yay. So we're going to go ahead and start with uh, Dr. Perez and Adaseli, and then we're going to bring uh, uh, the Grahams, uh, well, no, the painters back on, and then all of us are going to ask uh, some Q&As amongst one another, and you're welcome to put questions in the bottom for us to ask these folks. But um, I'm so excited. Uh, you guys joined the chamber uh, during uh, the COVID. This, this opened up, uh, and, and we're just very honored that you were, were able to do that. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're located, and why you chose the East End? Yeah, so we're on the corner of Wayside and Lawndale, just across the street from the uh, Gus Wortham Golf Course and Caddy Corner to the Dinner Bell Restaurant. And um, we are residents of the East End. We actually are able and fortunate enough to be able to walk to work. Um, but when we first moved to Houston, I uh, ended up uh, renting here while going to U of H for school and it just became home. So once I came back after finishing up school, I knew this is where I wanted to purchase a home. That's wonderful. And um, Adesela, you two met uh, in school. Can you just tell us how you two met? I'm just back in college. Uh, we were in the same, oh, kind of in the same circle, his fraternity, my sorority. Um, and just stayed friends and, you know, met up later on in life and the rest was history. <laughs> yeah. Great. And you both met at University of Houston, correct? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Go Cougars. Okay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, this is wonderful. And so, um, uh, Oscar, what made you go into physical therapy? Uh, kind of untraditionally, uh, most people that go into physical therapy, either they knew about it or they've gotten physical therapy in the past. But um, I was getting a master's in athletic training from uh, Stephen F. Austin State University in Nacogdoches. And while I was in school, I was doing some internships and getting some mentorship from other physical therapists, physicians assistants, and you know, just the niche of the rehab process after a surgery really grab, I gravitated to it. Um, learning about the human body and getting my study habits um, really narrowed down and funneled in. I was able to just kind of get more interested in physical therapy at that point. I knew I wanted to be in physical therapy and started pursuing and researching uh, which programs were available to me. That's wonderful. And this is your studio. Can you walk us through? Um, I, I see where the front entrance is and everything else, but tell us about your space here in East End. Yeah, so we have, uh, we're about a little bit under 1200 square feet. So we renovated the place and made two private exam rooms and slash treatment rooms. And we also have a third treatment room that is semi-private with a curtain but um, that's the one that you see right there in the picture with all the dumbbells and the exercise balls on the, on the wall. Um, we have our treadmill, SciFit. A SciFit is an exercise bike that can accommodate um, anybody in a wheelchair as well because you can um, use the bike for different exercises on the, on the arms. And also, we have a full a set of weights that were, um, we were able to purchase them from a local vendor. It's called GetRx here in the East End. So they're great, they're great to work with. I recommend them to anybody. Um, so we really wanted to source all our equipment from local vendors um, as much as possible just to keep the uh, support small business. Wonderful. And I got a question here, and it's for either of you. Um, what is the trampoline for? Oh, <laughs> it looks like a trampoline, right? Uh, that you can step on. It's actually for, let me just say. It, it's called the rebounder. You can work to uh, 
uh, to work out the shoulder or actually stand on it to work on your balance. Um, we have weighted balls that you can toss to the trampoline and uh, to be able to catch a ball that's weighted at a certain speed, um, we can accommodate different rehab protocols that way. Oh, that's wonderful. And, um, you know, next to ev uh, every great man is stands uh, next to him, a great woman in Ada City. How, how important or how wonderful does it feel to work with your husband on a daily basis? Oh, it's amazing. Um, especially since before his job was just, you know, took up so much of his time. Mm -hmm. I rarely got to see him. Even when he was home, he was working. So now it's just a blessing that I get to see him all day. And not every day. It's not always, uh, you know, hearts and rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it's fun. We, we bounce ideas off of each other. We collaborate and it's our baby. So there's nothing more that means more to us right now than making sure that we do our best to you know, help it succeed and thrive and, you know. That's awesome. And I saw on social media that you are now offering uh, hourly sessions to work out. Uh, can you tell us about how that got started and, and how we can connect with you to do that? Yeah, so that's the other aspect of our business. So we're OP therapy and wellness. So the and wellness aspect is um, for individuals that are looking to get some guided exercise, um, lessons or also for those that finished their physical therapy and the therapy is no longer medically necessary per se, but they want to continue on that journey of continuing to get better. They're uh, able to continue into our wellness side of, of the business where um, we guide them through the exercises, uh, uh, help them maintain uh, their, re their risk of injury low and just maintain them moving you know yeah. we promote motion we see a lot of times that even if it's not for just you know working out but if someone's had an injury even if it's been a year two years ago or any kind of surgery um, they're kind of hesitant you know to just going out there and working out and pulling some weights and trying to do their max because you know afraid of re-injury like you said so coming here he gets to show you the correct way and making sure we minimize any kind of risk for the future Great. And I know everyone is going through the COVID-19, that extra pounds that people are, are, are putting on. And sometimes people are saying it's more than 19. It's almost like 50. Um, but, but any tips on, on how people out there can uh, creatively uh, keep those pounds off and be healthy and well? Definitely. Um, when we're in our comfort of our home, uh, we be, tend to become a little bit more sedentary. So my advice is just keep moving. Um, keep active. Uh, don't eat all the quarantine snacks at once, you know, uh, practice some uh, good habits, stay hydrated, um, do some chores, new projects around the house, anything to get you moving is better than sitting around doing nothing. Um, and if you're working from home, um, don't just sit in one spot, set yourself up properly so you can reduce the risk of having some aches and pains from being on the computer, on the couch, or at your dining room chair all day. Um, even taking intermittent rest breaks, get up and move, don't just sit all day, those type of things. Yeah. That's a great, That's and I, I, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> walk your dog is true. I know, I think I'm getting pain in my, my, my leg and my, um, so I think it's because I'm sitting too much. I need to start putting a little timer reminding me to st stand up. Um, but speaking of that, do you have any virtual sessions that, that maybe you can teach us um, or, or do you, so we can find you to, to, to do at home? Yeah, so that's the service that we were recently able to start uh, implementing into our business, uh, given the legality of telehealth. Um, but we are able to do some virtual visits for physical therapy. Um, so you can stay in the comfort of your home. We are able to do our free consultations to see if therapy is right for you. Um, over the phone or over a Zoom meeting like this. And then, but if your therapy would require a lot of hands-on, I would recommend more of in-person type of uh, environment. But if I am able to guide you and, and do it over the, the computer screen, then definitely I, I'd love to incorporate that into anybody's uh, wellness plans or therapy plans. Wonderful. So if people decide to come in during COVID, what are uh, some of the safety measures uh, they can see? 
Well, thankfully, I was telling him, you know, whenever we were starting all of this, it's kind of like not our new normal, but just our normal. Uh, and we were very fortunate, you know, he knew coming in that all the equipment that we had to have, the furniture that we had to have had to be antimicrobial. We had already, we're fortunate to have stocked up on sanitizer, stocked up on gym cleanser, you know, so disinfectants. So it was just something that we already had. So what we've implemented is just making sure when we do have patients or clients come in that they're separated. It's only us two, so it's very easy to keep um, everything clean. Um, we have about 15 minutes between each person. We make sure that we, you know, disinfect everything in between, rub everything down, all our fitness equipment. Um, so we just keep up to date with the CDC guidelines and making sure that we're complying and maybe going a little bit above that, just being extra cautious. Um, like I said, this is our baby. We want to make sure everybody feels comfortable coming in um, and safe coming in. So everybody that comes in is required to wear a face mask or face covering. I wear mine um, as well. Adesali does as well, even though she's in the office mainly. But we want everybody to feel at home and safe. Wonderful. Well, we're so excited. We're going to actually bring the painters uh, back on and go through their presentation. And then we're all going to come back because all of us are, are Easton residents and, and we'll be able to, to share some more information about how what we're doing uh, in the neighborhood. So thank you so much, Adesali and Oscar. We'll be bring you guys right back. Is that okay? Yes, sure. thank, you. thank you. Awesome. Hello, Chef G and Graham. How are y'all? Hi, guys. We're so, uh, I personally, um, I, I don't know if you can see my shirt, but I wore this uh, Tuk Tuk shirt in honor of Chef G. Uh, I got this on my trip to Thailand last November, and I'm just so excited to, that you guys are bringing this street to kitchen restaurant to the East End. Uh, first of all, can you tell us a little about yourself and Chef, how you got started uh, wanting to cook? So uh, the way I started, you know, when I'm young, you go a lot of the kitchen. We have family restaurant in Thailand. So you go up with in the kitchen and somehow it turned to be like an automatic. You love to cook, you enjoy. But when you're young, I hang out in the kitchen, but I want to eat something in there. When you're young, you just want to try everything. And that's why my grandma started to treat me a little bit by a little bit, you know. Tell me how to make curry pay, tell me how to cook some dish, and somehow she just tell me you ready to cook and she let me try my first dish. I remember that time so excited. Oh, it's that's, come out good. <laughs> that is so wonderful, so wonderful. And so Graham, um, are you the taste tester for all of the, the dishes uh, on the menu? When people talk about their COVID-15 or sometimes COVID-45 or whatever it is, I can't use that excuse. You can see that I'm definitely the one who tastes everything a little too much. But uh, I can't complain marrying a, a chef. It's been a great journey. Uh, one thing about Chef G is she did, she started cooking at, eight, at six years old. And her grandmother had a neighborhood restaurant where they do everything from scratch. So fast forward, and she worked in kitchens. And, you know, when I met her in Bangkok, she was actually working in the industry. Um, she then, we then moved to Houston a few years ago. And when she started working with Justin Yu over at Theodore Rex, the way they were approaching food was very familiar to her because it was very much farm to table. And she said, that's Thai food. It's all about fresh ingredients and reimagining them to our tastes. So that, that was a very natural kind of way for her to move from one industry of fine dining into what we're doing now with this uh, kind of Thai approach. And so what made you decide to move to the East End? So we've been living here in the East End. And as you know, uh, my agency, Wonder, is a member of the chamber. And you guys are just amazing. Um, we've been our off office over off of Commerce um, and, uh, and Charters. I can never remember if we pronounce it Charters or Chartres in New Orleans. They do it differently. <laughs> but... Uh, the East End has been home, and it's where we really wanted to have our first restaurant. As you know, we've had a, we've had a delivery service out of uh, Northside Village off Cavalcade, but our dream was to come and really anchor ourselves here. We love the people, we love the vibe, and the potential for East End is just amazing. That's wonderful. And did you come up with this wonderful um, artwork? 
So, right. So my contribution is less about the food and more about the brand side of things. So we've been working very hard to, um, you know, apply what we do at Wonder to bring it, uh, Street to Kitchen to life. And this the artwork is very symbolic. The, the roosters are actually sacred tattoos called Sakyat, and they're very good luck. Um, and you can see the symbol on top of them. And that represents nine steps to Nirvana. Um, and so we really hope that we can bring that to people. And then because we're in Magnolia Park and we're very proudly in the oldest uh, Mexican neighborhood in all of Houston, and we love that flavor. So we put our sign in Spanish, Especialidades Tailandesas. I think that's so wonderful. And um, of course, I'm of Mexican descent and I want to be one of your first customers when you open. Uh, my mouth is just getting watery just, just, just talking about this. Can you tell us some about the menu, some of the items, some of your favorite items um, the, and some of the customers' favorite items that are um, available for us? I would say the popular item for us right now is our pad thai because the way we cook, uh, make pad thai sauce is different than what restaurant here made. And we 100% vegan friendly on our pad thai sauce. So we can make our vegetarian or vegan friendly on the pad thai. And all the curry, our curry pad, we make it from scratch. So it's the freshness on the herb in the curry pit, you will get more than in the canned one. We do not buy the canned curry pit. So that's all the curry, you, you have to try that one too. And wow. we're offering, what we're offering that's new is our Thai fried chicken. And um, we were very fortunate to have some really brilliant fryers in the space that we're moving into. And uh, I don't know that a lot of people who haven't been to Thailand know it, but Thais make some of the best fried chicken anywhere. And we're very excited to introduce that to Houston. I, like I said, I will be the first in line when you open. I love fried chicken. Uh, I grew up with my, my mom making it and it's one of my favorite dishes of all time. My mouth is getting watery just, just thinking about this. Oh, um, <laughs> so tell us about the location and, and how that came about. So we've basically been on the search for our own standalone restaurant. And, uh, you know, we've incorporated the help of realtors and everything else. And nothing was quite fitting right. And it was one fateful day that I went and filled up gas at the Valero at 65th and Harrisburg. And, uh, and there was a, I had, unfortunately, we never got to eat there, but we heard it was a good restaurant called Antojitos Veracruz, kind of Veracruz specialties. And it had closed. So when I paid my gas, I went in and I asked the attendant if that place was for rent. And he said, indeed, it was. And, uh, and so we moved right in. And that's and it is literally a mile, like just over a mile from our actual house in the East End. So we're, we're very much like Oscar and Araceli. We can walk there. It's pretty great. That's wonderful. And this, for, for those who don't know, is right where the, the metro overpass is. Um, and there's the Valero gas station and you're right next to it. So for right now, especially during COVID, um, you'll be doing takeout and delivery. Is that correct? Yeah, thank you for bringing that up because a lot of people ask us if we're going to have a dining dine in open. And I think for this year, at least the foreseeable part of this year, we're just going to be running um, delivery and takeout. Uh, we have a drive through window, so it's very low contact, and we can, uh, you know, hand off to drivers, or if people want to come up and order there, then we can, you know, uh, call them over and bring the order out, out the window. And, um, yeah, the system is really good, and it is hidden, so we need to get the word out there. The overpass there is, they did a beautiful job on it, but I think the problem is there's very low visibility, so you have to uh, actually know that you're coming to us. Yeah, those in the know know to go down and just make a little U-turn and go right into your, your restaurant area. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And one other uh, thing, I know I love the combination between uh, you branding and then you, Chef G, cooking, but, but are there any other uh, things that you guys like to do together that are, you know, complement each other? Oh my goodness, um, yes. A lot of things. We, I mean, that's how we got together, isn't it? <laughs> uh, we love to travel. And obviously that's been curbed right now. And uh, that's the big thing we have to stop because we love to, you know, go to the beach or maybe some, you know, 
mountain and river and this whole year we have to you know take all the pan down because we can't go anywhere yet and we both love motorcycles mm. and in fact that's a funny story because after we'd started dating really quickly i uh i had a motorcycle in thailand and so i I invited her down to the beach and I ended up, I hate to say it, but the, a guy challenged me and we ended up getting in a race <laughs> and, uh, and we were really pushing it for hours on end. And when I got to the destination, she was absolutely fine. And when I told my father that evening, cause he was an old motorcycle racer and rider, he said, marry that woman right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's, it's so great how that happened. Um, but we are all going to be here to support you. And we're going to bring uh, the Perez's back on too, so we can all chat together. Um, but what I love about all of us on this call right now is that we're all residents of the East End. And I, I was born and raised here. I still live here. And it's so nice to meet fellow neighbors and then fellow business owners that are here. Uh, so what, first of all, thank you for that. But I wanted to say one thing that I, I in talking to you earlier that we all have in common is pets. And I see that you've got your pet right there. Can you introduce she, your pet to us? And she is the, we're gonna be the first restaurant to serve Terrier. <laughs> over a biryani rice with a really spicy sauce. Do you want <laughs> this is Kitty and uh, we're actually in Kitty's house. We're just kind of lucky to be here. Yeah. Uh, Miss Kitty is a rescue who uh, it, I don't know how she ever survived that life because she's the biggest princess you'll ever meet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I know that. <laughs> they all turn that way. And then you, Adeseli and Oscar, t tell us, do you have pets? Yes, we have uh, three now. We have a whole group. Uh, we have a Shih Tzu, we have a Schnauzer, a miniature Schnauzer, and then we rescued um, what we think is a pit lab mix, maybe, about a year and a half ago. So, we, yeah, the Spoiled, house is pretty full. Cool. rotten. And I think it's so funny. It's the same thing. We're like, it's their house. We're just living in it. We're never going to get over yeah. it. I'm sorry. If you come into our house, you have to love our dogs. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I love it. That was a deal breaker for me when uh, I met uh, anyone. It's like, okay, if they don't like my dog, can't, can't, can't talk to them, can't marry them. Sorry, and I did not accept. <laughs> yeah, we used to, and I have a German Shepherd, and, and we used to have a floor mat that said, a spoiled, rotten German Shepherd lives here. And it's just so, <laughs> so true. And I think all dogs, uh, especially the rescue ones, they all deserve to be spoiled. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Yes, and then an, another thing I wanted to say, you, uh, all of us you know, live in the area. What are some of the, the fun things that you guys like to do here in the East End? We'll start with the, the painters first. Well, one of the things that we were doing, because we live near to uh, little Danny's Speedos Go Fly Kite Lounge, which is a really cool little bar. Uh, obviously, during COVID, we haven't been able to do that. So we find ourselves, there's a wonderful biking trail uh, just off Harrisburg, and we can bike in and get our get a little bit of uh, fresh air that way and go into town and we just we love to walk and we also um we also do some gardening around here and some of our neighbors also do so we kind of share some vegetables and herbs and things like that uh, oh. we love these and we love the people great and are you uh Adesede and oscar what do you guys like to do here in the east end same thing. Mm -hmm. um, just we love going even to uh, Bohemia's. Um, their live music nights. Yeah. Um, like you said, we've been in Little Danny's. We love that place. Just trying the different local restaurants. We we love food. Yes. Um, we try and then anything. Trying the local breweries. Um, as far as activities, um, we do like going to the trail and riding our bikes with our dogs on our backpacks. <laughs> oh. um, we. I like the the disc golf course right here at the park. Um, so just, this is home. Oscar wishes he could uh, go golfing more, but. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> watching everybody golf across the street. I'm just. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I found out that we all of us have a Thai connection. Uh, of course, Chef G, you're from Thailand. And then the Perez's, they did their honeymoon there. What was your most memorable uh, thing when you were on your honeymoon in Thailand? It had to be PP Islands. Um, I had been there once before and he was he would look at pictures and he'd be like, it's okay. I don't know. Like you're talking it up so much. It doesn't seem that great. I don't know. Just water. And I'm like, watch, I'll take you. 
So we went and he's just like, oh my gosh, the pictures don't even do it justice. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So, I made a believer. Yeah. Yeah. Just renting, uh, what is it? A tail? The long, long tail, tail boat. That was the most memorable thing. Um, we rented a long tail boat, a private one. I mean, it cost us no more than 50 bucks. And it was for, for five hours, day. just touring the different islands. It was just an amazing experience. Uh, oh. Seeing all the fishes, like. And the food. Oh yeah, and the food. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then um, Graham, is there anything that you miss, uh, well, uh, both you, of you miss from in Thailand? Oscar and I said are making us homesick. <laughs> I, I was there for six years and of course Jeff was there her whole life and I um, I literally miss everything I miss the people I miss the fact that you know we would get her on the motorcycle and yeah, we'd be on a beach life. or we'd be on a mountain or we would be yeah the social life is just amazing and the biggest thing of all and what's been the most interesting observation is that I think Thai people, and that's what we hope to bring a little bit more than just the food is the spirit of Thai people, which yeah. is not to take things so heavily. You know, uh, it's kind of like taking a little bit of a lighter look at life. Yeah, I would say that we kind of enjoy our life like a daily, like a make sure today we do our best, you know, because we believe in Buddha. So we're thinking you lucky to wake up today. So do your best, do what you want to do, what you like to do, because you don't know tomorrow you're going to wake up or not. That's the culture we go out with. Amen. It's a good so, day to have a good day. So did nice. you spend all your money at the first three weeks of the month and at the end, you're just still happy eating ramen noodles. <laughs> <laughs> but fresh ones too. That's right. <laughs> That's so true. And so what is going to be one of the first things that, that you do either in the East End or anywhere else uh, once COVID um, has been lifted? We'll start with uh, you, Oscar and Alasadi. Um, we really didn't get to have our grand opening. Um, we want to invite the community to come and be our neighbors. Uh, we want to meet anybody and everybody that is in the local area. So we want to kind of have a re grand opening mm -hmm. that way community members that haven't been at our facility or have a need to come to our facility yet can actually meet us and tour our facility. Great, I love it. How about you, uh, Graham and Chef G? Well, I think when we can imagine a, a calm or, or, or post-COVID reality, if I dare say that, uh, we would love to be able to open the dining room and, and host people inside and really have a, we like to do pop-ups too that's, that's you know, thing. so we, when we can do magical pop-ups and do some uh, surprising dishes with courses and sometimes uh, some of the local wineries will donate wine to it and we can pair so it's quite fun oh that's wonderful so someone had a question here um, and it was when the, the the painters were talking so is that why your tagline is unapologetically Thai on the website thank you, thank you so much for asking so the reason we're unapologetically Thai is when we got here, there's some really good food that is, is Thai. I will say a lot of it is American style Thai. And so we really started, you know, chef was cooking a lot at home so we could eat the same style of food. And it started to dawn on us that if all of the people who visit Thailand eat authentic food and love it, why don't we just not do, for example, You'll never get chicken in your pad thai in Thailand. If you get chicken in your pad thai, it's for tourists only. But the really traditional pad thai is always shrimp, oh, for example. Shrimp, yeah. Ones. And so we wanted to bring the real Thai taste and not apologize for it. And the proof for us was not only did, you know, everybody in Thailand eat it that way, but when you saw um, expats like me, we didn't go eat the tourist style. We also ate. The very authentic stuff so that sounded really promising that we could just without any apologies bring you the true Thai taste here in Houston and so far it's been it's been pretty successful I like that and um, earlier we were mentioning that there is no levels of spiciness in your Thai food and yeah. Chef Chi can you explain why why you you were going that route yeah so some dish it shouldn't have spicy on it and I cannot make it without spicy, but you're gonna lose the taste, you're gonna lose the balance, like you're missing one ingredient. So I will not do that. So 
when people come to uh, our kitchen and want to order the curry, I always tell them that we only have one level of spice. So that's a perfect spice shouldn't be on that curry. So if you want something milder, yeah. for example, you can order a masaman curry. Yeah, it's meant to be one. a little milder. If you want a curry and you and you feel like you want the uh, a, a better a better kick, red curry is traditionally spicier. Uh, again, you won't see it for a reason. In Thailand, they are certain spice levels because that's really the magic of those dishes. Um, we do have adjustable spices, but we don't play the one, two, three, four, five uh, on some of the dishes. For example, the the uh, stir fried basil, which by the way is the unofficial national dish of Thailand one of our most popular sellers. Eat it every day and and so people can order that from very mild all the way through. We say can't feel my face, Thai spicy. Um, and we can do the same thing with our Thai omelets, which we also sell at Urban Harvest Farmer's Market on Saturdays. And those have been really popular, really fun sort of like comfort food we think of yeah. it as. Then some dishes on our menu, like the chicken and noodles or the fried chicken that we're doing on yellow fragrant rice, those are not spicy at all uh, because they're really not intended to be spicy. Except the sauce. But you can choose levels of sauce. If you want it really spicy, you can get that. Or you can do like a sweet chili that's not spicy. Um, so we try to give you the variety, but what we don't want to do is start to apologize for the way Thai food should taste. So when customers come and they say, hey, I don't want this spicy, we can certainly point them in, in a lot of directions. Or if somebody's like, I want you to take my head off, uh, <laughs> we're happy to oblige. So uh, that's the unapologetic Thai part of all of this. Uh, thank you so much. And so I know that it's very, uh, very important uh, to follow your dreams. And if it is to be an entrepreneur and open up your business to, to follow that. And I commend you both for doing that. But um, um, Anasati and Oscar, how uh, does it feel to, to be an entrepreneur? And how does it make your family feel knowing that, that you've stepped out on a limb and doing something this amazing? Scary. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, proud. It's been a goal of mine. Um, when we first started even thinking about doing this, I looked at it out of Sally. I'm like, I'm coming up on my five-year goal. I'm that type of person that has a timeline with certain things. And she gave me her blessing. And then right after that, she was like, I'm all in too. So, I mean, we are both in it together and we feed off of each other. Um, the family feels that vibe. The family's very proud of us. And, We're very fortunate. We have yeah. very, very supportive friends, supportive family, and supportive mentors. You know, mm -hmm. Oscar has a lot of people that, you know, have helped him get here. Um, and they still reach out, and they're so welcoming and, you know, offering any advice, any help, and it's very much appreciated. Yeah, mm -hmm. very much. I love learning from those that have um, been here. They've done it. I don't know everything. So just by virtue of their knowledge is why we're here. Oh, wonderful. And how about you, Graham and Chef G? So for me, um, I would say, yeah, the same thing. It was scary because this is the time I'm really scared to open the new business. And I would say, I just keep talking to my mom because sometimes you overwork and you're really tired. And I talk to my mom and she say, yeah, I believe in you. You can do it. You know, it's going to be okay. I would say I'm really lucky. I, you know, my mom really understand. And Graham is really, really understand me sometimes. We both tired, but some, you know, sometimes I just over tired and overacting and he the one come me down like, it's going to be okay. Aww. And we have a good family to support us and good friend, yeah. you know, and we come from like, we have no idea how to start this kind of, we still new in this kind of business. So we have a lot of people. We have really good, good friends. Give us uh, the invite. You should do this. This is a better way. And you shouldn't just, you know, do this kind of stuff. And that's it. I think, yeah. It's, I think everybody is there that's really supportive. It's, you know, Houston, it's East End. My boys at Wonder have been just fabulous in helping us with the branding. And then like uh, Oscar and Adesely, the, the family is really behind us. Yeah. Uh, you know, my mother and my father, my stepmom, stepbrothers, everybody's just rooting for us. And of course, we can't do it without our friends who become fans and our fans who become friends. Yeah. And we hope to keep growing that. And we also, uh, in addition to bringing some of the customers from other parts of town, we hope to keep bringing, uh, building up our audience in the East End itself too. 
That's wonderful. And um, I know that, that in Thailand, massages are very important and, and it's very affordable. And on our recent trip, I think my husband had one almost every day and it's just so knowledgeable <laughs> and, and just needed. Um, mm -hmm. Oscar, are you guys uh, offering massages at, at your uh, wellness center? Uh, we currently don't have a massage therapist per se, but um, with certain um, patients that require what we call manual therapy and sometimes massage is incorporated into their rehab. Um, but that's something we've talked about, maybe um, getting a massage therapist on staff uh, as needed for the wellness aspect of, of the business. Um, so that's something that we're exploring right now. Wonderful. But if you guys need a time as soon as we need, we're trying to convince Kun Kwan Chanok, who is Gig's mother. She's actually a quite really? renowned masseuse over there. She's not ready to make the plunge and move here. <laughs> but we're trying. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be first in line for, for her her business too. <laughs> And so I know that, um, you know, we're going to be wrapping up right now, but are there any, um, your hours of operation, I know we can find all of that on your social media uh, pages. So we'll start following you guys and, and maybe you guys do some more sessions that we can learn how to maybe cook and eat Thai food properly. And then uh, maybe we can learn how to do exercises properly because I hear there's a right way and a wrong way to do squats um, <laughs> and, and, and things like that. So uh, as a closing, would you like to share any kind of words of wisdom or uh, anything about your business? I know um, when your Street to Kitchen is going to open, things like that. We'll start with you guys. With Street to Kitchen? Mm -hmm. So what we would like to say is all of you watching here will be uh, the, some of the first to know because we're doing what we call a soft launch. And we will be serving as of this Monday. So we got all our permit, permits taken care of. <laughs> oh, there's Kitty. She's excited. <laughs> um, so anyway, we hope that people, we're going to be doing lunch and dinner. So 11 to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday. And Saturdays, we'll be doing 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. We're closed Sundays. But as of Monday, you can come see us. Mm. Uh, or you can visit our site and, and make an <laughs> order and pick up. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. How about you, Adesanya and Oscar? Any closing words or anything that we can help you guys with? Uh, just in these type of times, just stay positive, stay optimistic because the future looks optimistic and just keep moving. Um, don't let it become the COVID-19 or the COVID-25. Uh, keep moving. Um, I also just encourage people that, you know, I know we have certain services that we've promoted, whether it be social media or what's on our um, website, but we encourage people, if they're inquiring about anything, um, it's not like, a, you know, we're a new business. So, um, and during these times, especially, we're just trying to adapt and, you know, learn. So I encourage people to just call and, you know, if they have a question about some kind of wellness plan or working out or therapy, um, anything like that, um, you know, we can be customizable. Um, plans and rates for them. So don't be afraid. Give us a call. Yeah. <laughs> We're your neighbor. We're here to help. Wonderful. Well, guys, thank you so very much. Um, uh, we It was an honor to have all of y'all together. I think you've got two new customers uh, um, yeah. at Street to Kitchen, and I, I promise I will be there on Monday. My mouth is watering. I cannot, I cannot wait. Um, <laughs> we promise to be the there. This may have some customers, too. After opening this restaurant, we have been working harder than we've ever worked in our lives. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll need that Sunday, that day of rest. It's going to be needed because uh, uh, we're going to make sure that that everyone is coming every day of the week to support you guys and, and you too, um, uh, OP Therapy and Wellness. I'm going to go online and check out some of these uh, tutorials that you guys have. And, and thank you again for, for being neighbors of the East End, for being entrepreneurs during one of the, the craziest time uh, to do that. But out of a crisis like this comes success. And I, I feel that it's going to happen for all of us. So thank you guys. And I wish you guys a great weekend. Thank you so much. All right, thank You're you welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.